Hi, I'm Larry Whitmer and welcome to another Random Act of Anatomy. So I'm here dissecting a beautiful barred owl that unfortunately was hit by a car and killed, but then donated to us for research and education. As I was dissecting the legs and feet, I thought you might be interested in having a look at these. Owl legs and feet are pretty interesting for a variety of reasons. Uh, one of which is that unlike most birds that have kind of scaly uh, plated um, legs and feet, these are feathered almost to the tips of the toes. Of course, the actual tips are, are armed with these amazing looking talons that are used for piercing and killing and grasping prey. Well, let's look at what a regular bird's foot looks like and doesn't get much more regular than a pigeon. Uh, so if we look at this foot, you can sort of see um, a very classic arrangement where we've got um, basically three toes pointing to the front and a fourth toe pointing to the back. That back toe is, is actually the, the big toe in us and it's called the hallux. And this sort of uh, conformation right here is called an anisodactyl foot. And it's the, the most common in birds and actually a lot of non-avian uh, theropod dinosaurs have very similar kinds of feet. And in fact, owls can adopt that anisodactyl posture as well. You can sort of see that here with one toe in the, in the back and these three toes in the front. What makes owls different though, is they can actually take this fourth toe and do something that other birds can't do, which is to actually spin that fourth toe around such that we now have two toes in the back, the fourth toe and the first, and these other two toes, the second and third, pointing front. This conformation is called a zygodactyl foot. And some other birds have this kind of uh, foot as well, like parrots and, and woodpeckers and, and some others. So what's different about owls is they can kind of go from anisodactyl to zygodactyl whenever they want. Here's this other foot, which I actually skinned so that we can actually see the muscles and, and tendons a little bit better. And one thing we can see here is again, here is this classic anisodactyl, three in the front, one in the back kind of arrangement. And once again, we can take this fourth toe here and just curve it around such that we now have two in the front and two in the back. And I think you'll agree, that's a pretty deadly confirmation. So that's today's random act of anatomy. Thanks for tuning in.